Hello and welcome to the Eye, your English news bulletin. I'm Esther. These are the headlines. With the festival season beginning with muted Ganesh Chaturthi celebration in the country, Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Friday held a high-level meeting to take stock of the present COVID-19 situation and the status of vaccination. The Western Sumi Kukami Ho Ho has expressed dismay over the recent report of a joint spot verification headed by IGP Range Lima Sanab Jamir along with Parent District Administration on 3rd September at Lamhai Namdi and some villages of Akahuto area under Dhansari Par Subdivision Dimapur District, Nagaland. The BJP today said lawyer Priyanka Tiprewal would contest against Mamta Banerjee in the September 30th Bab Bhavanipur by polls calling her fearless after many party leaders reportedly refused to take on the challenge. Now for the news and details. A man accused in the rape case of a 32-year-old woman in the Saki Naka area of Mumbai was arrested on Friday under sections 307, 376, 323 and 504 of the Indian Penal Code, said Mumbai police. The horrific incident took place at 3 a.m. on Friday in Saki Naka, where the accused assaulted the victim with a rod and left her lying unconscious on Kairani Road. The woman was immediately admitted to Rajwadi Hospital and her condition is said to be serious. The victim had serious injury marks on her private parts and was found stranded on the road by the time the police got on to the location. The police said that they had received a call about a fight between a man and a woman at Saki Naka. The accused was identified as Mohan Chauhan, age 45. The police are conducting an investigation on whether the victim and the arrested had known each other before the incident. The Assam Cabinet on Thursday decided that additional Chief Secretary Maninder Singh will conduct an inquiry into the boat accident in Jorhat. After the Cabinet meeting, Health Minister Keshab Mahanda said that a criminal complaint would be filed against those responsible for the Jorhat boat accident. A Cabinet meeting was held on Thursday by Chief Minister Himanda Biswa Sarma, in which several key decisions were taken. Mahanda said additional Chief Secretary Manidar Singh will conduct an inquiry on the boat accident and report has to be submitted within a month. Jorhat Police has been instructed to file a criminal complaint against those who are responsible for the boat accident, he added. According to a preliminary report on the accident, around seven passengers have been reported missing and one woman has lost her life. Eight persons who were injured in the accident are currently being treated at Jorhat Medical College in hospital. Talking about the defense, Mahanda said the state government would stop its operations against the militant organization Dimasa National Liberation Army for one month, reciprocating to their unilateral ceasefire. During this period, the members of DNLA will not be allowed to carry arms or declare any bans, he added. It also said that decrees and diplomas issued by government-approved distance learning institutes would now be considered at par with on-campus courses for government jobs. With the festival season beginning with muted Ganesh Chaturthi celebration in the country, Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Friday held a high-level meeting to take stock of the present COVID-19 situation and the status of vaccination. Amid the threats and apprehension of a third wave of the pandemic, India has achieved landmark vaccination exceeding 72.37 crore people as of Friday morning. The COVID situation is also under control with the weekly positivity rate coming to 2.31%. According to Health Ministry data, more than half of India's adult population has received at least one dose of the vaccine, while 18% have received both doses. Kerala and Maharashtra continue to add the maximum number of daily COVID cases. At least 35 districts in India are still reporting a weekly COVID positivity rate of over 10%, and 30 districts are between 5 to 10%. Health Ministry data revealed this. 
The Western Sumi Kukami Ho Ho has expressed dismay over the report of a joint spot verification headed by IGP Range Lima Sanab Jamir along with Parent District Administration on 3rd September at Lamhai Namdi and some villages of Akahuto area under Dhansiri Par subdivision, Dimapur District, Nagaland. The Ho Ho in a notice stated that the said report verification is completely lopsided and biased given the fact that the areas which was reportedly verified falls under Dimapur District. However, the Ho Ho claimed that the verification team never intimated the concerned Dimapur District administration or the concerned village or villages of Dimapur District. Any such exercise without due concern of the district administration of both the districts, especially when the issue of boundary demarcation is in pending dispute, is considered arbitrary and pre prejudicial. The Ho Ho questioned the intention of such one-sided exercises and also the wisdom of the joint team of Nagaland Police and Parent District Administration, headed by Lima Sinab Jamir, on their reported reminder to maintain status quo. In this regard, the Western Sumi Kukami Ho Ho reminded the team of the Chief Secretary order dated 8 July 2019, where it was directed that if any people are still present in the disputed area, they are to be immediately vacated out of the disputed area and therefore, upon witnessing the illegal settlement of the so-called Lamhai Namdi, the joint team ought to have promptly evicted all illegal settlers at Lamhai Namdi for illegal settlement as per the standing orders of the government for removal of the settlement from the disputed area. Further, the WSKH said due to this unauthorized directive of the team for status quo is prejudicial and bound to further complicate the already existing dispute. The two-day-long Southern Angami Students' Union Open Futsal Tournament 2021 got underway at Jakama Local Ground under Kohima District on Friday under the theme Rise as One. PS2 Advisor Youth Resources and Sports Zale Nika Miesul Chaya graced the occasion as Chief Patron of, for the inaugural session. In his address, Chaya called upon the players to take sports as an industry, adding that sports can be an alternative way out to put oneself in the bigger picture, earning fame and glory like education that imparts knowledge and shapes a person's life. He also urged the gathering to change their mentality and approach about sports by stopping to visualize sports as a mere hobby or recreational activity, rather focus on its merit and take up sports as an industry. While appreciating Sasu for the innovative concept of oneness through sports, especially football lovers, to keep the passion alive while exhibiting the idea of oneness and brotherhood. He asserted that the present Naga society stands at a crossroad and added that young people has lots to learn, offer and give back to the society. Chaya urged the youth to step out of the comfort zone and apply the concept of dignity of labor, stop being selfish, rather motivate one another so as to envision for a transformed Naga society, he added. Sasu President Zovito Reka, in his brief address said the tourney was organized to uplift togetherness and intent to keep teamwork and sports spirit alive. He lamented that the society is entangled with ism and further called for the youth to be an agent for oneness and retrieve the lost value of society to rebuild. I assume if every day is a chance to become a better person. Every day is an opportunity to grow beyond our own present barriers. If education imparts knowledge and shapes a person's life, sports can also be an alternative way out to put oneself in the bigger picture, earning fame and glory. Let's change our mentality and approach about sports. Let's stop visual, visualizing sports as a mere hobby or recreational activity. Rather, focus on its merit and take up sports as an industry. With these few words, I wish to conclude. I wish all the participating teams and players to compete in the true spirit of sports. Vice President Letso Mekrov, speaking to Hornbill TV, said the union is organizing the futsal tournament with 48 teams vying for the coveted title. 
While adding that the tournament motive was to bring people together through sports, he, he said that it was not only centered in Southern Angami area, but to the whole state of Nagaland and expressed his excitement over a good turnout of the tournament from different backgrounds. He informed the champions will get rupees 30,000, the runner-up will pocket rupees 15,000 and the two semi-finalists will be awarded rupees 3,000. The first time hosting this uh, open futsal tournament at, at Jakama ground, Jakama local ground. Uh, there are 48 teams participating. Uh, it will be held today and tomorrow, the 10th and 11th of this month. Uh, we have five courts, one preserved for the final match and the beginning match. Uh, our main motive behind organizing this uh, tournament is uh, to bring all the people together uh, diverse background, diverse. It's basically uh, anti-ism. So it's not only uh, cent centered uh, towards the Southern Angami area. We are invite all the players from uh, uh, around Nagaland, and we are very happy to have a diverse team here today, which uh, highlights our team very well. Rise as one. In more news, Canadian Hindu diaspora protested outside University of Toronto and demanded to withdraw the university's endorsement towards an anti-Hindu conference known as Dismantling Global Hindutva. At the call of Hindu Forum Canada, many Hindu organizations such as Canada Hindu Registry, Canada Hindu Schools, Canadian Hindu Volunteers and other organizations staged to protest. Canadian Hindus showed their dismay and frustration over the University of Toronto's sponsorship to the Hindu-phobic conference. They wrote to the university that University of Toronto is near and dear not just to the Hindus in Canada, but to Hindus across the world. Not only are many of us students of this esteemed university, many are employed there. Hindu Canadians are doctors, engineers, scientists, teachers, graduates, postgraduates and PhDs from the University of Toronto. By supporting this conference, University of Toronto is not only putting them at risk, but all Canadian Hindus at large. They chanted, shame, 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 University of Toronto. The placards read, universities stop Hinduphobia. The protesters marched to the Ontario Legislative Assembly. They urged the University of Toronto to withdraw its support towards the controversial conference. They also filed a hate crime complaint to the Toronto police. In a chilling and brutal incident of animal cruelty, over 100 stray dogs have been poisoned and 30 stray dogs were buried alive in Shivamoga village. The members of the Gram Panchayat have been booked. Shivamoga Animal Rescue Club member G.S. Basava Prasad lodged an FIR on Gram Panchayat members. The FIR has been filed under Section 160 of the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals Act 1960. Got a call from uh, uh, village uh, people that uh, more than 150 to 200 uh, dogs has been buried. Live live dogs are buried in uh, inside the forest area, MPM forest area. So um, we we went to visit the place, and later uh, we came to know that um, all village uh, Gram Panchayat village, Gram Panchayat uh, uh, president and PDO and who are all are involved in this case. Actually, this is what we, this is. More than uh, 300 plus dogs we came to know later, and um, actually it's a ABC tender, animal birth control tender. Okay, we, they have to apply for tender for animal birth control, and then they have to do procedure like uh, you know, operations, and then doctor facilities, everything they have to do. But uh, these people, what they did means uh, uh, they don't know even even they don't know the animal birth control also in village uh, gram panchayat uh, presidents. They did all the uh, they catch all the dogs and uh, and they they did more than 20 by 20 um, one pond like uh, 20 by 20 small pond. They dumped all those live live dogs inside the pond and uh, closed that uh, closed it. On the reported incident, Shivamoga Superintendent of Police B M Lakshmi Prasad had this to say: Throughout the rural station limits, uh, there is a place called Rangnathpura village, under which comes under Kamdalu Hosur uh, Panchayat limits. Uh, in that village, there was an effort to uh, catch stray dogs and neuter them as per the rules uh, provided. But uh, it looks like the contractor or whoever had come 
has uh, culled around uh, 30 to 40 dogs and buried them in a nearby uh, Tangdalu forest area. So based on that, we've registered a case uh, against uh, unknown persons and uh, some Gram Panchayat officials who may be uh, involved. A uh, case has been registered under Prevention to Cruelty of Animals uh, Act and the investigation is on. We have uh, some leads in the investigation. The further uh, efforts are on to uh, check who are the people behind it. Right now, uh, it's not possible to tell because the bodies of the dogs have been decaying. We had a forensic expert come by, a veterinary forensic expert, and so far they have given an opinion that they are not able to ascertain the cause of death because of the decomposed uh, nature of the body. So far, uh, we have found around 30 to 35 dogs, but we are searching the area to see if there are more uh, dogs that were buried. The Nationalist Congress Party has alleged that former Mumbai Police Commissioner Parambir Singh deliberately misled Anil Deshmukh as well as Maharashtra Chief Minister Udav Thakre in the Antilia bomb scare case. The Nationalist Congress Party has alleged that former Mumbai Police Commissioner Parambir Singh deliberately misled Anil Deshmukh as well as Maharashtra Chief Minister Uttav Thakre in the Antilia bomb scare case. NCP spokesperson and Maharashtra Minister Nawab Malik also alleged that the NIA was protecting Singh in the high-profile case. As per the National Investigation Agency's charge sheet in the case of SUV with explosives found near industrialist Mukesh Ambani's house in Delia, a cyber expert told that it had Singh asked him to modify a report during the initial prop. As per the NIA charge sheet, Singh paid the expert rupees 5 lakh to create bogus evidence, claimed Malik. Reporters told it was Singh who brought expelled Sachin Waze back into the police force and gave him key cases. Still, Singh's name is not in the charge sheet. Malik said that the NCP always suspected that Singh was the mastermind of the Antilia case and had leveled allegations against Deshmukh to malign his image on the instructions from the BJB. President Ramnath Govin has appointed new governors in four states according to a press communique issued by the Rashtrapati Bhavan on Thursday. Lieutenant General Gurmeet Singh has been appointed as the governor of Uttarakhand after baby Rani Maurya tendered her resignation from the post. President Ramnath Govind also ordered shuffling of governors of some states which includes shifting Banwarilal Purohit from Tamil Nadu to Punjab. He was earlier holding additional charge of Punjab. The center's interlocutor and retired IPS officer Arun Ravi has been shifted from Nagaland to Tamil Nadu as its new governor. Jagdish Mukhi, at present governor of Assam, has been appointed to discharge the functions of the governor of Nagaland in addition to his charge till a fresh appointment is made, the communique said. The above appointments will take effect from the dates they assume charge of their respective offices. Prime Minister Narendra Modi will reportedly be inaugurating a 10-day Dipavali festival celebration in Ayodhya ahead of next year's assembly polls in Uttar Pradesh. PM Modi is likely to inaugurate the mega event on November 3, for which the Ayodhya Development Authority has already kick-started preparations, where a new Guinness record of 6.5 lakh Diaz will be lead. Vishal Singh, Ayotia Development Authority Vice Chairman said, We will be fortunate to have the PM in Ayotia again. Noted Bollywood art designer Nitin Chandrakant Desai's proposal to design the Dibotsav sets has been forwarded to the state government for approval. A decision will be taken soon. Although the date has not been yet decided of Prime Minister's visit to the state, it is very likely to be a day before the Holy Festival is celebrated in India, the Ayotia Development Authority informed. President Ramnath Govind visited the Ayutthaya temple site on August 29 and offered prayers to Ram Lala, where India's biggest Ram temple is being constructed under the Modi government. President Govind said while inaugurating a Ramayan conclave, without Ram, Ayutthaya is not Ayutthaya. Ayutthaya exists where there is Ram. Lord Ram resides permanently in this city, and hence, in the true sense, this place is Ayotia, President Govind said while inaugurating Ramayana Conclave. Referring to his name, the President said, I feel that when my family members named me, they were possibly having the feeling of respect and affection towards Ram Kata and Lord Ram, which is seen in the common public. That's all for news from the I. I'm Esther. Keep watching Hornbill TV.